So we've talked about some of the different woods, but now let's talk a little bit about body sizes because that's something that for a lot of people, I have a lot of students that come to me that end up, you know, this 14-year-old girl walks in with his jumbo-sized guitar and starts trying to play something. Yeah. And and I can see now, and all of a sudden Muriel Anderson runs through my head as somebody who's, a you know, a tiny woman that plays a huge guitar and, yeah. and has no problem. But yeah. um, but for a beginning student, that's not a good place to start, you know. On so the what, other hand, you know, when Muriel had her harp guitar built, she had a, a scaled-down version of the standard harp guitar. Oh, good. Built for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I build quite a few different body sizes, and I'm going to talk right now just about standard steel string 14 fret guitars. Okay. That's where the the neck joins the body at the 14th fret. I also build some 12 fretters and a couple specialty things. But um, yeah, this this is my Juniper model, and it would be the smallest uh, size I do. It, is there a comparable? What's the closest like old Martin size to that? Probably. Uh, double O. That's what I was gonna. Yeah. Yeah, about a double O. Right. Yeah. So you think more about the 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 width of the lower bout as kind of the, the defining characteristic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then the biggest one I do would be the Sequoia, at 16 inches. Right. Now whether I build this size or this size for somebody is going to depend on a couple things. One is what sort of tone they want. Okay. Um, the smaller guitars will tend to have more clarity, really good projection. Less bass response. So if they want a balance that's more to the treble, okay, okay. go for a slightly smaller body. If you want a big, complex, robust <laughs> sound because you're a singer and you want to sing over this symphony, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Then a larger guitar might be better. Yeah, yeah. 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 Smaller guitar is probably going to appeal to uh, an instrumentalist who's playing the melody of the music on the treble strings, and they right. want those to be strong and present. So right. you can hear the melody of the music. And if I'm strumming, uh, back, backing up fiddles and mandolins, that small guitar, I might as well leave in the car. Well, you know, <laughs> uh -oh. um, it depends on what you need in that accompaniment. If you need a lot of bass, right. if you want your bass to come through and be heard with the fiddles and yeah. stuff, then you need a big box. Right, right. If you want... So if you have a bass player... You're not even probably worried about that because now your guitar is more percussive yeah. in the rhythm section. Yeah, and, and you, you want you want mid range cut at that point. Right. When you're doing the rhythm. You want your rhythm to cut through. Right. And you could use a slightly smaller guitar with more mid mid range presence and more projection. Yeah. And even the little tiny guitars, uh, they're they cut like crazy. Wow. They cut right through the mix. Yeah. Even though they're not loud, yeah. they have the frequencies in the right range that our ears are very sensitive to. Uh, and so they appear to be very loud. Yeah. And their clarity makes them stand out in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other big consideration with body size is the body size of the player. Um, right. If you're a smaller person, you probably don't want to wrestle with this great big guitar all the yeah. time. Um, kids, teenagers, uh, sometimes do much better with a smaller guitar. Yeah. Also, and this gets into uh, the concept, concept of scale length, some people like shorter scale lengths. Maybe they have smaller hands. Maybe they play... So let's, let's define that real quickly. Tell, tell me what you're talking about when you're talking about scale length. The scale length is the actual length of the string right. from the nut, where it goes over at the headstock, to the little bone piece on the saddle. So the vibrating, the vibrating length, of the length, length of the string. Yeah. And the smaller that is, the closer the frets will be to each other. Right. And that's, the, that's the key factor. Yeah. For people who with small hands or who play music with very complex chord voicings, like some jazz, mm -hmm. they like a shorter scale length. They like to be able to span seven frets, right? Maybe, so they can get the, that note up there that sounds so good with the ones down there. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, and so a shorter scale might be better. Right. Now, shorter scales work better on smaller bodies. It's just a function of sure, the, just the length of the body and, and where the bridge ends up sitting. On the guitar, if the, if the bridge is too high up this way, it doesn't drive the top very well, and it you tend to get it, very close. more nasally sound. Right. So yeah. closer to the sound hole it helps create that problem, right? Yeah. As you shorten the scale, this this has to move up, assuming that you still connect the neck at the 14th fret. Right. So this moves up, and it affects the tone of the guitar. So if yeah. you want a short scale, it's hard to put that on my big 16-inch body and have it sound good. Right. Yeah. So you have to go to a smaller body just to get the mechanics of the guitar working properly. Yeah. 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 So that's another consideration. The guy who wants a short scale, you got to move him into a smaller body. Right. If he wants it to sound good too. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we could save the whole bridge placement conversation for another time, but that but that, that's got to be a, a huge thing too. Yes, it is. And, and it relates to the bracing inside. Yeah, it's, it's critical. I know, although I'm going to venture into it for just a second, because I know when uh, Santa Cruz got started um, in the mid late late 70s, mm-hmm. um, they built a smaller body guitar, but they would only make it 13 frets. You could get in a 12 or 13 fret model, and they wouldn't make it a 14 fret model yeah. for pretty much, that, I think, that same reason. Otherwise, yeah. it was going to put the bridge, put the bridge in the, in wrong, the wrong place, and it's going to sound terrible. Yeah. You know, So it's odd that a lot of their early H models are 13 fret models, oh. You know, so you don't hear much about 13 fret yeah, that wasn't very common back then. Yeah, well, I you think see they more of them now, but back yeah. then, boy. I think they were pretty innovative in a lot of things, or at least willing to go places that other people hadn't. Yeah. And I think they opened the doors to a lot of kind of interesting things. Um, again, that's another conversation we could have different too. But yeah. but I think they, they I think they actually had a lot to do with even the the boom twenty years later of small builders. You know, because yeah. um, they really showed the world that there were. Other guitars and Collins was kind of in that same boat too. You know, he was he was doing yeah. guitars right around the same time. Yeah. But um, so we have guitar bodies from small to big, and you might go either way if you have a specific reason. Right. Most of the guitars I build are right in the middle. The Bristol Cone and my Tamarack. They're, so those uh, those look really similar. They're right in the OM and a little bit bigger size range. Yeah. 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 And they just seem to work well for all kinds of music. And right. All kinds of playing styles. Yeah, so more more general, and and again, even those those um, names come from Martin's Double O, Triple O, yes. and instead of going to Quadruple O, they went to OM, kind of more or less, right? Uh, no, is o- OM is uh, it goes single O, okay, double O, yeah. getting bigger, yeah, Triple O, yeah, the OM is the same size. Oh, that's triple right, o, different scale length, right? And then there's a huge jump in the Martin sizing all the way to the M. Well, right. dreadnought, I guess. Right, yeah, but dreadnought, but that's a different body shape. Right. Um, they have their M, which is the same as a quadruple O. Okay. Right. That's that's pretty much the biggest thing. I think they made some bigger, like seventeen inch guitars or something. But okay. There's some give some jumbo sizes in there somewhere. Somewhere, down the yeah. They kind of came and went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. It wasn't their forte, huh? No. So yeah. But, but the majority of the guitars fall right in, you know, between an OM and a dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah. And that's in the 15, 15 to 16 inches. Right, okay. And these are these are in there 15 and a quarter and 15 and 5 eighths. Yeah. They're my two most common sizes. Okay. okay. And they just work great. Yeah. They're like a good, all around, balanced, versatile guitar. One of the things I, uh, you know, if people, especially if I have younger people or, or smaller people that want to play, uh, and they're and they're stuck with their dad's dreadnought or something. Mm-hmm. You know, the first thing I tell them is get a strap on it and hold. You know, yeah. don't don't try to put it on your lap and play. You're not yeah. going to be able to. So get used yeah, to playing yeah. it with a strap. Like this, yeah. yeah, and then it'll because because they are fine to play standing up. You virtually don't notice the size right. if if you're not worried about that. You know, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for the talk on sizes. Yeah. Welcome.